Today we're going to talk about the 3D freestyle curve. The option or creation type we're going to use is called through points. With this, if I start just picking out in space, by default it goes to the XY privilege plane of the compass. So I'm going to click on the Z axis of the compass to true up my view and just simply be begin selecting points. You'll notice that the curve that is generated runs to the points that I have specified. These points can now be modified by simply clicking and dragging to the location that you desire. One thing you cannot do with the through points option is control the, cur the uh, mathematical input to the curve. How complex is the curve going to be? I can't describe that curve as being a fourth order or a sixth order curve. The result is based off of the points that I select and how complex the curve shape is. If I select OK to generate this curve, I can now analyze how complex this curve is using my geometric analysis. And you'll notice it's a 6 by 3. So this is telling me how many components or how many internal segments there are on the curve, or not points in other words. This is the actual order of the curve. I'm going to double click on the curve and I have points handling. Here I have the ability to go in there and insert a point. I can remove a point or free or constrain a point. In this case I have nothing constrained, everything's free. Now I want to insert a point. I can come in and tell it which segment I want to insert the point in and where on that segment I want the point to be inserted. And now I have an additional point to control that curve. But note, with every point that I add into the curve, I will get an additional segment, internal segment or additional component to that curve. I'm going to double click on that curve. I'm going to go over that point that I just added. I'm going to right mouse click and in this case I can say remove this point. I'm going to create another curve. This time I'll go over here. Double click to end. I will create a third curve. This time the curve I'm going to generate is going to go from this end point. You'll notice the little red halo that appears. It's going to constrain to this end point. And I'm going to do the same over here. It's going to constrain to this end point. Now that I have my curve drawn in, this would be a second order curve. I can right mouse click and say impose curvature. I can do the same here, right mouse click and then say impose curvature. Now I have my handles which I can modify to change the magnitude of that curve. And you'll also notice that I'm able to drag that point along that curve that I have that constraint affixed, affixed to. Drag this back to the end. If I were to go in here now and analyze this curve, you'll notice that it is a single segment sixth order curve. It's a single segment because I only have two points selected, the start and the end point. And because it's curvature continuous, it gives me a minimum of sixth order or fifth degree. If I analyze the control polygon of that curve. You'll notice here's one, two, three, four, five, six. Let me remove that. If I come in here now, double click on my curve, oops, I can 
right mouse click over my constraint and say by selecting on impose curvature, removing it, so it's just simply impose tangency. I'll do the same thing at this end, removing curvature. And once again, I'll analyze that curve. And here you'll see, again, it creates a sixth order curve. Even though I only needed a fourth order curve because of the tangency constraints, there's no way for me in here to specify how complex or simple I want that curve to be.